Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the market. Certainly lots going on and lots to talk about. And I was certainly wrong with the last video over the weekend where I had, at least in the short term, I'm wrong. As far as bullish sentiment goes, we've had further back and forth between China and the US. China's gonna do this, the US is gonna do this. Just some more back and forth and escalation essentially. And now we have word that Trump is going to meet with Russia and China at the G20 summit. That's towards the end of June, so that's still a ways away. And we're still watching longer term patterns. So we're seeing some names start to get oversold. We're seeing a narrative now where Bitcoin is acting as a hedge. We had Art Cashin on CNBC mention that potentially China is straying away from the US dollar and doing it through Bitcoin. Either way, whatever the reason is, Bitcoin has been very bullish. I've been trading cryptocurrencies a lot more in the last week than I have been in the last year with that change in trend. But as far as the market is concerned, we are still watching SPY with the weekly uptrend. So the must hold level for me to be confident in this weekly uptrend is 277.64. And that level is certainly in play in the short term over the next couple of days. After that, we're looking down at 272.42 as another support level as well. So the way that things have been playing out, the majority of the weakness that we are seeing in the last six, seven days is in extended hours. The headline risk is definitely on the bulls at this point, meaning it favors the bears because the odds that we get a bullish head headline that means anything at this point, and certainly Trump coming out bullish can cause the market to, can see bots react very short term. But as far as a significant recovery, as really concrete progress, we're not really seeing much risk of that kind of headline coming out overnight. Whereas a, a tweet from China or a news release from China about what they're planning on doing next could certainly lead to a bearish outcome, which is essentially what happened between Friday close and Monday in the open. So the majority of the gains that the bears are making are from swing trading and seeing weakness in extended hours. Bulls have seen opportunity in the daytime with day trading. Fortunately, as a day trader, this whole pullback, you know, even with my bullish mindset, hasn't really hurt me at all. I didn't have any positions aside from some MJ that was small and not really significant. But anyways, had not seen much downside as a day trader but if you look at every single day on the hourly time frame over the last bunch of days there is opportunity for the bulls every single day and not a ton of opportunity today but we saw pretty much four hours of a slow bleed from the open where we dropped a bit over two dollars perhaps two dollars and fifty cents and then we saw in one hour a two dollar bounce so the bulls made a two dollar bounce in one hour as opposed to the bears slow and steady grind down of four hours to drop two dollars and forty cents from the open so there is still opportunity in both directions personally for me i love oversold bounces i am more comfortable day trading these short-term bounces but long-term picture these bounces are just leading to hourly lower highs and we ended the day with an hourly bear flag and we closed fairly weak 280 psychological support and 2800 on the S&P 500 is the short-term level to be watching. And then the weekly support level is in play after that. Let's talk about monthly timeframes because monthly timeframes are important right now. And if you're looking at the S&P 500, we're looking at the last low of the December dump down at 233.76. And anything above that level is a monthly higher low. That being said, we did break to the all-time high, so it's not a very clear pattern. There are tons of individual names like oil that have monthly equilibriums forming. So we have our high, low of the December dump, high of the bounce, and now we're looking for monthly consolidation to form a higher low. And just off the top of my head, let's pull up BABA. Monthly equilibrium here is forming. High, low, lower high, scouting a higher low compared to the December dump. Apple on the monthly time frame. Equilibrium is forming. So any individual name that you're looking at, look at the long-term perspective because if we do see these equilibriums play out and if bulls are able to hold the December lows on this pullback over the next couple of months, then we're going to see volatility drop off in my opinion and we're going to see tightening monthly equilibriums leading to a break 
Q4 2019 or Q1 2020. And actually, I've been talking about the gold multiple year monthly equilibrium and I've been targeting Q4 2019 for that activity to pick up. So perhaps it could correlate with the market breaking these tightening ranges with what gold is going to be looking to do, but that's a whole different topic. So keep an eye out on monthly patterns. Make note of yourself. Are we anticipating whatever individual name you're looking at for it to form a monthly equilibrium? And if that is the case, then we would be watching for perhaps a few weeks of red and a monthly higher low to try and form compared to the dump lows. So as far as SPY goes, anything above the December dump low is a monthly higher low, but I'm most concerned short term with the weekly uptrend. Can we keep that weekly uptrend or are we going to fall through it? Once we see any meaningful bounce take place on the daily, we have a new gauge and a new line in the sand. Anything under 288.94 is just a lower high with the bulls not proving anything. To change the trend, we have to bounce, set a higher low and a higher high, and that's just not happening anytime soon. We're closing in on oversold conditions on the daily chart for the S&P 500. The last time we hit that was the December dump low. And there's a lot of individual names in the same boat, Apple being another one off the top of my head, but we're watching for potential short-term oversold bounces. Again, it all depends on what your trade strategy is. I'm a day trader. So if I see a gap down open and I see hourly oversold conditions, I sit there and wait for a bullish entry or I just don't trade. And that's essentially what I did today. I, I traded Bitcoin most of the day, but did a small trade on a, an MJ name for an oversold bounce for some small profit. And it's just my comfortability. If we were seeing clear bear breaks take place with follow through during trading, which again, we look at the all time high since the all time high day, two days, we've had the bears keep control and see the majority of gains during regular trading. For the most part, it has still been the bulls that see the gains during regular trading. Again, big difference. If you're a swing trader, you're obviously doing something way different than what a day trader is doing. So if you are looking at Hedging. If you want to hedge a long term portfolio, at this point, I personally would be waiting for a short term bounce on the daily time frame to cool off some of these RSI levels and to enter bearish. Let's say if we started to see a bounce and we made it up to 285, 286, I could make a bearish entry and put a stop above 289, anticipating that it's just going to form a lower high. That's just a very rough example. So I'm still watching. The most important things for me are the weekly uptrend, which is still intact for the SP 500. And if that level breaks, I'm watching RSI levels, daily RSI, four hour RSI, hourly RSI. And again, I love oversold bounces. It's just one of my edges as a trader. So I will always be looking to play that side of things as opposed to entering bearish on short term bounces. Let's get into the individual names here now. IWM, bear follow through. So again, let's zoom out. We want to always zoom out and know what's going on, bigger picture, and then zoom in from there. Anything above 148, let's see, you could say 154, 52 was our higher low, but that was more sideways trading. 148, 41 is the most important support level for me. We do have a bit of a double top. We did get a higher high. And it's the same thing with SPY. You could consider SPY has a double top at this all-time high. And let's look at SPX for the lack of adjustments for dividends. 29, 41. And 29.54, that's not a very convincing higher high. You can absolutely call that a double top. So IWM, same thing. You could call this a double top here, but it's all about 148.41. If we break that level, monthly equilibrium setup will be on watch. If you're really bearish this market and you think we're going to drop straight down to monthly lower highs and lower lows, that certainly is a different story. I'm not on board with that just because we do see things. I mean, unless we get, you know, big time escalation with this trade deal, I would be very surprised to drop and break those levels without some kind of market bounce beforehand. But looking at QQQ, again, daily RSI, oversold for the first time since the December dump lows, the weekly time frame to try and maintain the uptrend, we have to hold 176.60 for the bulls to be their strongest. So we're looking to line up with that support level right about when SPY tests, if SPY tests its 277 support level as well. And again, we hit a new all-time high on QQQ, but just look at the monthly chart. What are the odds that we drop straight to a lower low from December? Or what are the odds that we hold a higher low compared to that level and see ranges tighten up and volatility drop off? Financial sector. So again, weekly time frame. Uptrend intact as long as 2508 holds, but a monthly equilibrium is potentially shaping up. We have our high of 2907. 
low the December dump, lower high of 28.13, and we'll see if we have to pull back and form a higher low. But because we're not even close to losing the weekly uptrend at this point, I like the weekly time frame for the more clarity, knowing that we could still pull back another 6% in the financial sector and still be in a weekly uptrend at this point. XBI, clear bear break, 82 was building a base of support in the low 82s, and we've clearly fallen through that. Daily RSI is almost oversold here. And again, monthly equilibrium potentially setting up. High, low, lower highs set. And now can the bulls hold the low of December, 64.38, to form a monthly higher low? Volume will be important as well. If we do not see increasing monthly bear volume, that's an indication that we're more likely to stay within the equilibrium. If we see increasing monthly bear volume, that increases the odds that we break to a lower low. XLV. XLV on the weekly time frame. So we have our low, high of the bounce, and it's a much different perspective here. Let's see what the monthly looks like comparatively. Equilibrium in play, high, low. Lower high was set early with the bearish reaction to Bernie Sanders or whatever it was, the Democrats. We've got 93.45 as our top, and we're looking for a higher low compared to 80.61. So we have instances now where if individual sectors break bearish, it's going, to, it's going to give us clues. So if XLV were to drop to a lower low and we still see SPY and QQQ and everybody else in their monthly equilibrium, the odds that we're going to break to a lower low on those names will increase if XLV breaks. That being said, if XLV holds its support level because we're closer to breaking on XLV than some of these other names, but if we can hold the monthly higher low and start to shift some momentum, that will increase the odds that monthly tightening ranges will form on a lot of these other names as well. Looking at the volatility sector today. So we can see a lot of people mistakenly think that we're directly inversely correlated to the market. We can see the high of Thursday. We're still nowhere near, well, we're fairly close, but not a whole lot. As far as where we closed percentage-wise, we're down 12% from the high of Thursday. So this is what I referred to today as the wow factor. The volatility sector sees a bunch of shorts cover and a squeeze essentially when there's that wow factor, that first, here it is, here's the fear. And now the market knows that there's fear. We know that there's a trade conflict going on. We know that negative headlines are based around the trade conflict. We know what the, the issue is with this market right now. So that, in my opinion, is a big reason why we are not seeing the same kind of explosive move. And if we do see the S&P 500 bounce in the next day or two, if we cannot break to a higher high here on VIX and TVIX and all these other instruments, then we're going to look for a lower high and a daily equilibrium to form. Even if it's just a short-term one or two-day bounce to cool off RSI levels on SPY before continuation down, that's going to be enough to tighten up this range in the volatility sector. So that's something to be watching very closely. Can we break to a higher high before SPY bounces? And if the answer is no, then we expect that tightening range to form. Oil. So again, I talked about the monthly equilibrium for oil. And honestly, I thought this is what SPY was going to do. When we started bouncing from the December dump and we got multiple months into that bounce, I said, all right, we're looking for an equilibrium. And we just kept going and we broke to a higher high. But oil is doing what I thought most everything would be doing, where we have the high, low, lower high. And now we're looking to potentially start our monthly consolidation to form a higher low. And again, just like everybody else, what are the odds that we see a drop from where we stand right now and see a 30% drop to break to a lower low versus what are the odds that we pull back and form a higher low and see a monthly equilibrium tighten up on oil into Q4 2019 or perhaps Q1 2020. We technically haven't started this monthly consolidation very clearly yet. If we break $60 and see this weekly chart continue to pull back and we see this daily chart continue with weakness, if we break $60, then I'll be confident we're seeing the consolidation for the monthly higher low to try and form. We are still in a weekly uptrend on oil as well, and that's not at risk. 54.50, we still have 10% before we break the weekly uptrend. So weekly uptrend on QQQ, SPY, and oil will all be important for me in terms of short-term action and how much bounce can we see from these levels. If that level holds, I expect bounces to be stronger than if the weekly higher lows do not hold. Natural gas, a little bit of follow through today, not meaningful, still have to be cautious of the weekly bear flag at this point. And on the weekly time frame, we can say anything under 289.4 is just a lower high. So it's not a convincing bounce as far as I'm concerned. Anything above 2492 keeps the daily uptrend intact. But bulls really want to make their way up 
towards 270. Really, 272 is the line where we double topped before another leg down. And if we can't break that level of 272, the odds of a weekly bear flag will remain intact, in my opinion. So that was a whole lot more than usual. But just to summarize again, monthly time frame. Every individual name that you're looking at, look at that monthly time frame. Establish what you feel is the most likely scenario. Are you going to be looking to enter monthly higher lows, trying to scale into oversold positions? And that's what I do oftentimes if I'm looking for a weekly higher low or a monthly higher low and daily RSI gets oversold, I'll enter for an oversold bounce. When the bounce starts to get going, I'll exit partial of that position and then I'll drop my stop loss down to break even, which gives me a stop loss most of the time below whatever low we have just hit. And that means if I get stopped out, I lose nothing. And it means clearly we're not forming that monthly higher low yet. That's a little bit of a a trickier strategy and it, it involves a pretty active management of it, at least initially. But overall, weekly uptrend is the most important thing going forward. And we'll see if this spy hourly bear flag at the end of the day that did not confirm into the close, we'll see if it confirms in extended hours and if we do get a gap down tomorrow. And there's going to be a lot of names with very beat up RSI levels if we do get that gap down tomorrow. So again, my personal strategy will be to play my bread and butter over soul bounces for some quick flips. I appreciate you watching, and I appreciate everybody's opinion, good comments on these videos for the most part, and there's no right or wrong answer as to how this is going to play out, and the curveball is the Bitcoin inclusion in the market narrative, market trade war narrative now, and how that's going to play out. So, thanks again, do good things, we got some Colorado here at the end, Rocky Mountain National Park with nobody in it, thanks to a weekday morning after some snow. So that was awesome, literally having entire trails to ourselves. And there is a bird of prey that looked like an osprey. It was trying to dive for fish in the lake. If anybody knows what that bird is, let me know. And some mule deer. And we'll be back tomorrow. Hope you had a good day.